Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with rank 12 of season 2 of the F1 2021 Williams Road to Glory. Yes, of course, if you missed out on the last video that went live last week from the Hungarian Grand Prix, would definitely, definitely recommend going back and checking it out as well. As always, a massive, massive thank you for the continued support. We've now gone through 39,000 subscribers. We're almost at 40k. You know, if you aren't already, please do leave a like and get yourself subscribed for more F1 content on the channel. But, yeah, like I said, if you missed out on Hungarian Grand Prix last time round, I think I've learnt my lesson. We need to go into every weekend now with no real idea as to what to expect. Of course, there will be spoilers in just a moment. But I expected the Hungarian Grand Prix to be a bit of a nightmare. Turns out we probably got, yeah, the best solidary point I've scored uh, in this career mode there. But Hamilton still leads the way championship-wise. Four points ahead of Max Verstappen there and a further uh, 15 points ahead of Valtteri Bottas in the championship. With Sergio Perez languishing in P4. Mercedes still lead the way in the Constructors' Championship. We are currently ninth in the driver's table and sixth overall in the Constructors. We need to be a bit careful of Alpine. They've been picking up some momentum over the last couple of weekends there. R&D-wise, though, still just desperately trying to get more upgrades in the works. Unfortunately, heading to Belgium this weekend, we actually had a part failure again. Uh, so we're hopefully going to get that sorted for the Italian Grand Prix in a couple of weekends. And that should, again, I mean... Alpha Tauri, Aston, Alpine and ourselves are all pretty much neck and neck at this stage of the campaign there. It is really anyone's game uh, between us four teams there. But yeah, Belgium though this weekend, a bit more of a power circuit. Fingers crossed it'll suit us, but like I said, after Hungary, I think we should expect the unexpected from now on. Formula 1 is finally back in 2022 and now you can rep your favourite teams. Of course, using the F1 store, every team now has merch lineups available. Whether you're an Aston Martin fan, a Williams fan, Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, the choice is completely up to you. But yeah, check out the F1 merch store down below for all the official releases from all of the teams. And of course, as always, if you use our links as well, you massively help support the channel. So yeah, give it a look and see if there's anything you like. Here we are then, qualifying day at a rather soggy spa, similar conditions to what we saw last season here in the Williams RTG qualifying. We have got a couple of grid penalties uh, to contend with as well this weekend. We've had to put a whole new control electronics in the car. So yeah, only at the halfway stage of the year or when they having to start to take some grid penalties is not quite what I was hoping for. As into a rouge we go. Big, big lift through there, but managed to keep it in eighth gear. And then we can power out using the Mercedes power unit all the way up the Kemmel straight there. But yeah, I think qualifying today, though, like I said, not really going to put too much pressure on ourselves. We're probably going to be starting right at the rear of the field anyway. But yeah, we'll wait and see as to what we can muster up then. Just going to put a few laps worth of fuel in the car and try to get some laps in as Verstappen immediately goes fastest on a 152. Hamilton now sets fastest time on a 151.4. Mercedes are looking fast. Over one lap pace here, but as we head up through Blanchemont, there's just a faint lift, a blend of the throttle as we then slam on the anchors in towards the bus stop. Had to be super careful we don't pinch a brake on the way in there. Actually, really struggling for understeer on the exit of the final corner. It's going to be a 153 for us, but it's just 11th at the moment. That's not bad for our first run as we're still just trying to sort of test the track, everything like that. Fingers crossed, second lap, we can find a bit more time. But yeah, this Williams seems to be gelling quite well with Spa. The rain looks like it's going to be getting much lighter over the next 10 to 15 minutes. There should be more grip, but don't expect a dry track. Right, well, there we go then. Seems like qualifying, get your lap in right at the very end of the session, is going to be a way to elevate yourself up the order, reminiscent of Spain early on in the year. Look at this as we come towards the end of our second run. 1.1 seconds up here. Track is definitely getting quicker and quicker, so there's definitely some opportunities for a bit of a mixed-up grid for the Belgian Grand Prix. Like I said, obviously, we have got penalties, though. So wherever we start, it's not going to be as good as I would like as we head through the bus stop once more. Try and roll on the power. Shortest run back up towards the line. That's going to be a 152.5. P6, row 3. 
quicker than Checo Perez and Carlos Sainz. We're going to get one more run in late on in the session. Let's see if we can try and work some magic. Getting ready then for our final lap here in, in qualifying. Of course, only one qualifying session in the Williams RTG. There looks like Mercedes, one of their cars, has not opted to come back out. But I think everyone else is on their final runs. So now there's a big, big opportunity. As long as we don't do anything stupid, we could really try and elevate this thing up the order there and negate the positions lost from the penalty. But we've got to absolutely get this lap dialed in as we plunge it down through the source. Really have to be super, super careful on the throttle there, trying to modulate it as best as possible. You know, feel the back end skitting around underneath you as we head into a rouge. Have to try and actually keep a bit of throttle in through there, just so you keep the rear wheel spinning and under control as a tenth up as we head up the camel straight here. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of times come in. I'm sure we're going to dip way down the order as all the other laps come in, but as long as we can get it hooked up, we should be able to gain a lot of those places back up through the chicane at the top of the hill, get it tipped back over to the right-hand side there and short shift up just on the bump, losing a little bit of time through there as we head now down into Marwadi. Oh, a bit of a lock-up on the way in. you kind of got to try and V-shape the corner there. So just try and tip it down the hill through the next couple of corners there. Big snap of oversteer as we're just starting to get a little bit too tense, I think, with the car. Tip it in down through Puon, however. Definitely a little bit of time to be had here as then we cycle back up into 8th gear. Get the car over on the left-hand side. Break the 50 as you tip it in through the first part of the Fania chicane. Through the second. Take that curb nice and tidy. And then again, super careful on the exit here. The exit Stavolo, I think, is going to be critical on this lap. Damn! Damn, damn, damn. I think everyone else has given up, though, in the session. It didn't look like the track was getting much quicker there, but just that little overcorrection of the steer in there. Like I said, I don't think anyone else has gone for a second run, but just that small mistake there didn't want to risk binning it and giving the team a load of work to do overnight. But, I mean, yeah, P7 on pace for the Belgian Grand Prix. Like I said, I think it's either a 5 or a 10 second penalty. I don't know quite which at the moment there, but that's not bad. Let's get into the Belgian Grand Prix. We're all ready for tomorrow's race, but before we begin, let's have a quick look at those who will be fronting the grid. Hamilton, Verstappen and Valtteri Bottas. With qualifying complete, all that remains is the main event. We'll be live and uninterrupted for the Grand Prix tomorrow, so make sure you join us then. Well, there we go then. Qualifying done and dusted for the Belgian Grand Prix. Hamilton on pole ahead of Verstappen and Valtteri Bottas. So top three in the championship, top three on the grid. We ended up P7 there, a second clear of our teammate George Russell. So yeah, really was a good effort coming in from ourselves right along with Pierre Gasly. You can see just the pace deficit further down the order there as people just didn't time their laps particularly well. But yeah, let's head then to then round 12 of the campaign. We're over halfway through season two of the Williams RTG. Let's get it. Welcome along then to the Belgian Grand Prix, the race that gave us the maiden victory for the Jordan team in 1998. And in the same team, the phenomenal debut of a young Michael Schumacher. There's always something special around one of the many corners of this fan favourite circuit. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Bottas, Leclerc, Pierre Gasly, and Norris, Sainz, Vettel. Ricardo and George Russell, Raikkonen, Stroll, Sergio Perez and Ocon, Giovinazzi, Mr. Monaco, they've taken a grid penalty, Nikita Mazepin and Nicholas Latifi, Mick Schumacher and Yuki Tsunoda. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. Right, well, here we are then on the grid, ready for the Belgian Grand Prix. And after a few penalties have been dished out, starting P16 for this one. But myself, Sonoda and Sergio Perez all out of order today. Certainly going to make things very, very interesting as the day goes on. 
Especially as apparently we're going to go from completely clear to a soaking wet track back to drizzle. So how that's going to balance out with the intermediate tyres there and the full wets is one that's definitely going to be intriguing to see how that unfolds here today. I have got free tyre choice as well. Now is it worth trying to stretch the mediums uh, to about lap 14? They're sort of seeing when the rain is coming. I think that's going to have to be the way to go here today. But 22 laps around what is still, yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, my favourite Formula 1 circuit. Let's get in then here to the Belgian Grand Prix. P16, George Russell starts in P10, waiting on those five red lights. Lights out and away we go. I pretty much knew immediately there. I was just running a little bit too much throttle, but considering we're on the harder tyres, as Mazepin going for a big send in towards turn one there. We almost ran into the back of Esteban Ocon through the first corner, but luckily we just about get away with it there. Mazepin moving massively up the order off the start. As you can see everyone snake their way through Eau Rouge for the first time. Oh, big wobble from the back end there. First time around. Of course, heavy fuel, everything like that. Just the skid plane struggling just a little bit as we head up the camel straight here and still everyone weaving around trying to find some free real estate on the circuit. Ocon and Stroll just up in front of us trying to go side by side into the chicane at the top of the hill. I think everyone is just about going to make it through there. Giovinazzi really struggling on the exit. We'll dart to the outside of him as we head down in towards Malmody here and look at the grip round the outside straight past the Italian there and back up then into where we started P16 of the Grand Prix. Good little start in the end there. Like I said, of course, on the medium tyres. Never really going to be able to make too much progress forward unless you get super lucky. That is not the line at the pool, though, but certainly didn't gain anything from that one. So everyone just heads down through the bottom of the hill once more, just weaving it this way and that, sneaking our way around the Belgian countryside and the forest. Yeah, I think Russell has unfortunately lost out a couple of places off the start. I was really wondering whether he might have a good shot of points this weekend, but it's certainly all not over on lap one, and especially, you know, weather at Belgium is always quite an iconic mix here. And look at this. This is why we're so strong around this circuit on pace at the moment. Actually running quite a low downfall setup this weekend. And at the inside of Lance Stroll, I apologise, Esteban Ockham. That was never my intent to go for the move on you, mate. Luckily, he spots us, though, and gave us the room, and we don't quite end up pulling off the move there. It's Ockham. Actually, I'm going to say battery as we head back down towards Turn 1. So using a lot of his deploy there on the first lap. Around the outside through Turn 1. No, not quite. But might be able to get a run up the Camel straight. So we just close in ever so slightly in through a ruse there. A little puff of smoke coming from... Not smoke even, sorry, I should say. Just some debris being kicked up underneath the back of that Alpine there. But to the inside we go. Might make two moves up in less than a lap here as up the inside of Esteban pretty even on the brakes we'll give him the room on the exit but we will move past the Alpine and back up now with a 14th place there is good job nice overtake a lot of carnage at the start Perez up the inside of Russell it's all kicking off at the start of the Belgian Grand Prix there but Perez making moves Russell seemingly struggling DRS is being enabled this lap we can use DRS when you are within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone DRS now enabled then in the Belgian Grand Prix as we're just going to try and make sure we're inside the zone of our teammate George Russell. Obviously completely forgot Mazepin. He was almost in the points after that send through T1. But I think, yeah, slowly now he's just going to get shifted back down the order here as I think he's still, though, got the draft from Checo. Russell, though, gaining, 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 but nothing to be had this time. I think Russell is starting to lose a bit of time now behind Nikita in this Grand Prix. You can see Sergio Perez is completely checked out as he tries to close up on the top 10 there. But are we now going to see Russell maybe get a run on Nikita Maspin as we head up in towards Blanche? What? No, it just doesn't look like George wants to go for a move anywhere. So now we're gaining, gaining, gaining on our teammate there. To the outside, Williams side by side in towards the bus stop chicane. And are we going to be able to pull this one off there? Give George the room. Do not want to commit the cardinal sin of racing, which we have not. I'm at a P13 now of the GP. Unlucky for some. Hopefully not for us as we're going to try and shift past Nikita as well. A little bit of a snag in towards someone. Don't get out over that sausage curve. You can easily pick up floor damage. Especially when rocking the sim damage there. But yeah, Checo. Four seconds up the road there. Just a lap as we get a nice snap of oversteer up over the crest. But anyway, 
DRS activated now. Let's see if we can try and get a run on Nikita Mazbin there. To the outside. Should be, yeah, way, way past him. Goodbye, Nikita. We will see you at the end of the Grand Prix, mate. Um, yeah. Ooh, ha -ha. He says that and immediately bottles it. Yeah, let's try and see if we can keep up with Checo, though. But into P12. Got a bit of clear air now. Let's just get the car into a good rhythm. Of course, on an alternate strategy to everyone else, I think, in this GP. Could pay off handsomely. Could screw us. You just don't know. No threat of rain for the time being. Conditions looking good. Dry seem like the fastest tyre at the moment. The thing is, even if the rain doesn't arrive, we're on a pretty good strategy there. Mediums to softs that we should be fast right towards the end of the GP. But I'm just kind of hoping we could leapfrog our way all the way to the Inters. But team now not sure there's going to be rain. Over the track getting a lot more overcast. Well, the pace and the tyres slowly starting to swing in our favour at the moment there, as we are now pretty much used to these mediums in the Grand Prix. Perez and Kimi, the gap's still floating around the six-second mark, but of course, yeah, we should be able to start getting just that little bit closer over the next couple of laps there. Normally, lap seven is about when the AI start thinking about pitting. It seems like the top three are still exactly where they start, and then Gasly, fair play to that Pierre, because he is just causing an absolute train at the moment of some faster cars. Both Ferraris and both McLarens locked behind. The, well, I'm sure they're just staring at the Honda logos on the back of that Alpha Tauri. It's still struggling a little bit through Poo on. It's one of the corners where the AI is still very, very OP on F1 2021. Fingers crossed that gets patched in next year's title. But yeah, just keeping our head down, focusing, hitting our laps. This race will come back to us later on. That's what we've got to think. This Williams RTG, I've said it before and I'll say it again, is so much like a game of chess. Caution, caution. Ooh, yellow flags out. One of the Ferraris has gone round. Have they had contact trying to get past Pierre? Here we go then, riding on board with Charles Leclerc as we head up in towards the chicane. Has he gone round? No, must, must have been Sainz. Yep, Sainz has definitely gone round there. What has Carlos done in towards the end of the Kemmel straight? Activate the DRS there, tipped it in. Yeah, why, why wouldn't you want to park there, Carlos? Seems like a good a spot as any. Don't rejoin, please. That got me, got the, yeah, got, got my heart up a little bit there. But Sainz round, that should be a place for us. Now into the chicane. Yep, there is Carlos Sainz. Thank you very much. We will now inherit P11, one place away from the points. Yeah, very uncharacteristic error there from the smooth operator. We're expecting rain in around 10 to 15 minutes. That's what I want to hear. Rain predicted in 10 to 15 minutes. That's about 5 to 8 laps away. That's not what I want to see on the other hand. Um, but yeah, now, uh, we love that, but it's got to start raining pretty heavily, which I think the team were predicting. End of lap 8. It's all starting to kick off now in the Grand Prix. A few cars into the pits. I think it's just one from each of the big four teams there. One Ferrari, one McLaren, one Red Bull and one Mercedes. So we are now going to be up into P7. As they're all on hard, so they're still trying to go to the end. But hard tyres don't George tend to work. In the pit. George in the pit. El Giorgio into the pits as well. This looks like Bottas has jumped Verstappen. So that could be critical for Mercedes in this race. I think they're still a bit worried about how strong Verstappen's been in recent weeks. Most other runners then into the pits. No way. Well, no, there's still two more cars out on the track. But yeah, most of the front runners into the box. I think they're all going on to mediums though. So Hamilton has picked the superior strategy here, especially if we're going to get the rain. Because those hards are not really going to provide them much. Sebastian Vettel, though, leads a Formula 1 Grand Prix once again. Of course, won the race here in 2018. And has only ever took one race of victory since then in Formula 1. But, yeah, Sebastian Vettel ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. Ferrari's old duo back on top. As Bottas, I was about to say he seems to have jumped Hamilton as well. Hamilton immediately just trades places once more with his Mercedes teammate. There we go. Last two cars into the pits. And as we've so often done before, we are going to lead a Formula 1 Grand Prix. But I think Hamilton yeah, is pretty much immediately going to mug me off here as we head back out of the source. And Mercedes just breathing down my neck. It won't be long. We're making steps closer and closer to battling with these Mercedes and Red Bulls more frequently. We're not quite there yet. But give it, give it another season, I reckon. We're going to be right there with the big two. Here comes Hamilton, though. Gaining anywhere near as much as I'd expect him to. He's still going to look to the inside, however. And yeah, we're not really in a fight with him as we get all over the gearbox 
of the Mercedes there as Verstappen and Bottas trade okay, places further running. back. He might make a mistake. Yeah, I, I don't think we're going to be able to keep on him, Jeff. Love the optimism, but I don't think it's going to happen. Rain is forecast in just over 10 minutes' time. Rain in 10 minutes. Dry seem like the best tyre for now. Getting a little bit worried. This rain might not come soon enough in this Grand Prix as we are definitely starting to struggle a bit more on these tyres. Here comes Max Verstappen as we head up the Camel straight there. And yeah, the Red Bull car just powering past us in towards the end of the Camel straight there. Again, not going to battle these guys. It's just not worth it for us. But just want to see the rain. We think we may see some rain. ETA is about 15 minutes. It's getting further away. <laughs> Why, Jeff? We, we might not see it by the end of the race. I mean, we're going to have to swap over onto those sets of soft compound tyres. And I think the end of lap 13 was where I was going to aim for here. It does mean we're going to go quite a distance on them. But just worried we're not going to be able to get our life out of these mediums. And, of course, we need the pace as well. OK, we can take you this lap. Lap 13 just confirming to the team that we are going to be boxing. But here comes Valtteri Bottas. That doesn't quite have the same ring as Sebastian Vettel. But, yeah, now out of the podium places once more. I think we're going to re-emerge still pretty much in the no man's land we were in before the pit stops, but just got to keep our head down, because I'm sort of looking at Seb and Kimmy, thinking we might just be able to close up to them There's by the end. Laps of fuel remaining. Nine laps of fuel. We're still good in that department. Almost forgot we need to box at the end of this lap. I'm just looking at the fact Pierre Gasly halfway into a Formula 1 race is less than a two seconds behind Bottas in a Mercedes Get the car slowed down, though, into the box. Here's Checo Perez as well. So he has made slow but steady progress up the order. But we should theoretically now be one of the fastest cars on the circuit. Just hoping we come out. Yeah, we should be out clear ahead of our teammate George Russell. As long as we get a nice textbook Williams stop. 2.3, pretty good going. And what is the gap going to be to Kimi and Seb up the road? No more scheduled pit stops. Got to be really careful on pit exit here. Going to be about eight and a half seconds then. We'll just take into consideration all of the camels straight. That's the gap between us and points. Let's get them. I mean, through the middle sector, we are just taking time hand over fist out of Kimi Raikkonen and Sebastian Vettel. The gap was eight seconds at the end of sector one. It was down to six seconds by the end of sector two. But of course, the rest of the lap are probably not going to gain anything at all as Kimi will just DRS back up to, Serg uh, to Sergio, to Sebastian. Sebastian, I don't think he's within range of Sergio, however. Look at that purple. Purple final sector. Maybe a fastest laps inbound. Okay, clear. <laughs> a 1.42 late on in the Belgian Grand Prix here. This might actually be, I think, the second fastest lap bonus points we could pick up in this series. But, yeah, this car, it's not slow by any means anymore. And, you know, a fastest lap in a Williams isn't at the realms of possibility anymore. Which is weird to kind of adjust okay, to. We're far away from some rain. I'll keep you updated as the conditions change. So team's still saying rain is on the horizon, but fingers crossed, you know, fresher, softer tyres should even give us an advantage there as well. This is why I wanted to do this race the way around we've done it, but six laps to go. And yeah, Kimi and uh, Sebastian. Don't know why I keep wanting to say Sergio. Not far ahead now at all. Kimi Raikkonen heads down the hill in towards Eau Rouge, though. Lap 17 of 2022, and up the other side out of Radion. But Sebastian Vettel is going to have the DRS on the Flying Finn. Is Seb going to be able to get the run? We've got the DRS, though, as well on Sebastian Vettel here, and he's not taking any time at all. Uh, Kimi Raikkonen at the front of this little train. Purple, though, through Sector 1, and this is where we have just been super fast in comparison to these guys, just able to rotate their car so much better of course on these fresher softer tyres there the grip just feels so good through this middle sector of the lap as we try and tip it in down the hill they're running a little bit wide over the curbing but just having the confidence knowing the car will come back to you down a couple of gears at the 50 board inside the dirty air though through Rapuon is probably not the place you want to be but still gaining 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 Surely it's a matter of when rather than if now we move past Sebastian and back up into the points of the Belgian Grand Prix there. I think this is going to be the key about the second half of the season. Just trying to take those consistent points week in and week out here. As look at this. We're getting a run now on the Aston Martin just in front of us. Which side Seb going to go? 
Gonna have to have a look to the outside, in towards, uh, in towards Blanchemont, sorry. And we just about hold it there. Sebastian gives us the room inside, in towards the final chicane there. Seb actually later on the brakes, but we should still be able to make something happen as we head. Oh, a little bit of wheel to wheel contact. Apologies to Sebastian there. But we do make the move work, and yeah, fair enough. Probably did deserve a warning. Just got a little bit overzealous on the throttle at the final corner there and just hit the bump and got launched a bit sideways towards the Aston Martin. But back up now into the points of the Belgian Grand Prix. But can we make it two for two on ex-Ferrari drivers here? We're inside the slipstream in the wheel tracks of Kimi Raikkonen. And now the Alpha uh, Tauri with no DRS to defend himself. Can we get close enough to Kimi Raikkonen by the end of the Kemmel straight? It's a big send. Oh, we almost overshoot the corner there. We just get it out on the curbing. But full commitment, Kimi Raikkonen saw us coming. Probably, yeah, one of my most aggressive moves we've made on F1 2021 there. But now, up at a P9. Checo four seconds up the road with four laps. That one might, however, be a tall order. But track definitely now starting to get a bit more overcast. Oh, I saw the flash. Rain. Rain has arrived out of nowhere here in the Belgian Grand Prix. And like I said at the start, apparently it was going to fall very, very heavy for the first bit and then get a bit lighter again. So these final four laps then are potentially going to be championship defining for the front runners and could possibly open up the window for someone else if they want to make a risky call. Three laps to go then and the track surface providing less and less grip. With every passing corner at the moment, they can see puddles just starting to form. When it rains here in Belgium. Keep deteriorating for 10 minutes at least. Oh, it's not what you want to hear. With just two and a half laps to go, is anyone going to pull the trigger and make the swap onto intermediates? Is it going to be worth doing it? That's the other real question, of course. You don't lose too much time. DRS has been disabled by the stewards. DRS will be offline. Well, there we go. DRS now has been disabled in the Belgian Grand Prix. So clearly, FLI think it's just getting a little bit too wet. There is, look at this, split strash is coming in by everyone in the boxes. Both Red Bulls of Pitt. Hamilton, though, is staying out there. The same can be said for Pierre Gasly and Lando Norris there. Where have we seen that before with Lando Norris? I think we've just got to try and risk it at the moment. But are we going to lose about 10 seconds a lap? in these final couple of laps here. I think it's not looking great immediately as Max Verstappen just powers away down the hill. But Bottas has come out about six seconds behind us. Russell has George pit in as well. Stop. Oh, Belgium, what have you done to us? The gap's just all over the place. Max Verstappen now romping away from me as we head up the Kemmel straight there. But surely if we get anything more than ninth, it still wasn't worth making the stop for us. But we've Check just got to try and keep this thing. Strategy option on the island there. More strategy choices coming in by the team. And they want us in, but we can't. We can't now. I mean, yeah, track conditions really falling away. I just... When F1 does this to you, it is so, so difficult there. It's, I mean, now, surely the guys at the road can't hit either. It's just not worth it. You won't gain the time back on one lap. Never mind. You know, the question was whether we gain it back over two, but we've just got to keep short shifting, modulating the throttle, and trying to keep the car on the circuit. So look at this, Bottas immediately all over the back of me, and see how much extra grip that Mercedes has got round the outside, down at the Fania chicane. <laughs> it's, it's Spa 2008 all over again, as Leclerc now makes the move work and we've squeezes me off line. Oh, Ricardo now as well, having a look towards the inside as Hamilton he stayed out. He's gone right to the end of the Belgian Grand Prix. On track, but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car right now. Just be careful. Not sure how we got a warning for that one with Ricardo, but the gap to Sebastian is 14 seconds with one lap to go. Will Hamilton be able to hang on from Max Verstappen at the front of the field? Like I said, this could be championship defining there as Pierre Gasly has pulled the trigger. He has box now. We just one lap to go of the Belgian Grand Prix. There is look at this. We got nothing through turn one. It's just myself, Lando, and Lewis Hamilton. I think that are trying to stay out here, trying to brave the weather in these final couple of laps. As here comes Sergio Perez down into a rouge side by side on the way in. But there was only ever going to be one of us that could lift out in that situation. And look at this, Pierre Gasly just gaining, gaining, gaining back on me 
as we head up the Kemmel straight for the final time there. Sebastian Vettel, the gap's down to eight. Come in and switch over if you need to. We can't switch now, Jeff. It's the last lap of the Belgian Grand Prix. It is all kicked off here. Dramatic scenes late on at Spa Francorchamps. And like I said, if we can hang on to P9, and when we haven't lost, we haven't really gained anything from this, but I'm not confident we will. I think Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen might be able to get me here. As look at this, just tiptoeing our way down the hill. We've got no grip whatsoever. Pierre Gasly is going to go past me like we're standing still. Okay, as Seb. Position. Try to keep focus. Yep, team not even trying to say. You might be able to win it back there as Sebastian Vettel is just gaining, gaining, gaining on me. The gap's coming down so rapidly. I mean... It's just for a handful of points, but it could still mean a lot in the championship here as we just tiptoe our way through. And it is... One lap of fuel remaining. We are Sebastian Bourdais in the 2008 Belgian Grand Prix there. We're up from a podium to fifth, pretty much at the final corners of the Grand Prix. Here comes Sebastian Vettel. Hamilton will hang on, though, ahead of Max Verstappen, so it was worth it. For Lewis Hamilton here, Seb, he hasn't got the run up the hill. He hasn't been able to put the power down. We're going to have to go defensive in towards the final corners of the Belgian Grand Prix there. But here comes Sebastian Vettel. Here comes Kimi Raikkonen as well. Just trying to keep the nose there. We've locked up massively. Seb's turned in on me. Kimi Raikkonen's going to have the pair of us as we head through the final chicane there. We get a three-second time penalty. Seb, therefore, will claim the pace. That is heartbreaking. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Ferme. Many doubted whether they could pull off the win here at Spa-Francorchamps, but they've done so in spectacular style. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. It's a great result for Lewis Hamilton, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. Let's focus on the driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? I have to give it to Mr. Monaco. There was a lot going on all down the field, but they were the only one who I really felt maximised their potential. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time. Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula One. Well, there we are then, guys. The end and the conclusion of a highly, highly dramatic Belgian Grand Prix there. But Hamilton just, only just hung on from Max Verstappen there. I cannot imagine what that was like down at the Mercedes pit box there. Max Verstappen, though, does come through for P2 ahead of Valtteri Bottas and Daniel Ricciardo there. Charles Leclerc in fifth ahead of Lando Norris. Perez, Gasly, Raikkonen and Vettel round out the top ten there, so it all fell apart for Pierre. Had he not pit there, you know, he could have had P4 come the end of the Grand Prix there. Maybe even P3 as Bottas seemingly had issues later on in the day. And of course, despite the fact we got fastest lap, where we didn't finish inside the top ten, it all unfolds for us and unravels right at the end of the Grand Prix there. 11th place, I always argue, the worst position to finish a Formula 1 Grand Prix. That one was well and truly heartbreaking there. Just Nikita Mazepin, who didn't make it, though, to the chequered flag. Means championship-wise, Hamilton the gap now. Up to 11 points in the championship. Bottas only just 
within a one race margin at the front of the field there as well, ahead of Perez and at both McLarens. Uh, Charles Leclerc actually jumped me in the championship, to be honest, that should have happened a whole long time ago, uh, but fair play to Charles. No other movers though, Con uh, drivers championship wise, constructors wise, Mercedes 52 points clear, still at the top of the standings there. We still hold on to that gap ahead of Alpine there, and maybe, just maybe, if the luck went our way, you know, we could get close to Alpha Tauri come the end of the year. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed. And yeah, we'll be back very, very soon with more of the Williams RTG. If we get more races like that, we're in for a treat. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.